If you talk to anyone who knows me, they'll tell you I love 3D platformers. The colors, the music, the movement options, the thematic enemies, the bizarre bosses, the transformations, the upgrades. I love every bit about it. Banjo-Kazooie was one of those games that really made me fall in love with video games for all those reasons. Combine it with the wit and the charm of the characters, plus the world they inhabit, and you've got yourself a masterpiece that still holds up relatively well today. It feels like it's been a long time since I got this excited about a platformer. Mario Odyssey was a masterpiece and did a lot of interesting things, but I expect Mario to be like that. Sometimes the old standbys aren't enough to scratch an itch. A Hat in Time, though, is a game that did, in fact, scratch this itch. It's a marvelous game that came out in late 2017. It got a lot of attention on release as it had been kickstarted nearly seven years ago. It far surpassed its intended goal of $30,000 and it raised nearly $300,000. The devs at Gears for Breakfast and publisher Humble Bundle were inspired by many 3D platformers including Spyro, Psychonauts, and Banjo-Kazooie. They were concerned about releasing the game since Donkey Kong 64 had kind of put a bad taste in people's mouths with 3D platformers and frankly I don't blame them. The game was not as great as it could have been due to a really bizarre way of switching between Kongs in order to gain all the collectibles in the game. The music was great though, and I love me some Grant Kirkhope. Now, A Hat in Time has a very simple story, and it's honestly just enough to get you going. You're Hat Girl, you're on your way back to your home planet, you pass by a different planet, and it is inhabited by Mafia members. One comes up to your ship to collect a toll, Hat Girl says no, Mafia breaks glass, Time pieces, which is the fuel to the spaceship, get sucked out along with you, and bam, there you go. There's your story. Now, when you land on the planet, you see a red hooded figure fighting the Mafia. Her name is Mustache Girl, and she enlists your help in fighting the Mafia. She points you to a timepiece, and you two are best buds for all of about two minutes. Hat Girl is a caring soul and just wants the timepieces. Mustache Girl wants justice by killing all the people on different planets. <laughs> Mustache Girl, you gotta calm down a little bit. A Hat in Time borrows a lot of concepts from many different games, collecting new hats. Hats involves gathering yarn and knitting them while badges can be purchased from a twitchy salesman guy. The hats and the badges range from pretty cool and really useful to entertaining but overall useless. I was a bit disappointed with the hats and the badges as some of them felt like you could have done more with what they offered. Going into New Worlds is very much like Mario Galaxy 1. You investigate a telescope in an isolated room to go to the next mission. The worlds are really colorful with a great music score as some of the songs were made by Grant Kirkhope himself. The more the world you complete, the bigger the telescope gets, which I found to be a pretty efficient and charming touch to the game. Opening new missions involves collecting pawns, which are scattered through each level. These pawns also respawn, which avoids the problem of missing one or two collectibles, which was one of the worst feelings in games like Banjo-Kazooie. Each mission involves collecting a timepiece, and then it kicks you back to the main hub, a la Mario 64, Sunshine, or Galaxy. Collect enough timepieces and you unlock a new world. Pretty standard 3D platformer stuff. Movement is very Mario-like, with a tinge of Wind Waker thrown in at the end. There's diving, there's triangle jumps, there's double jumps, there's a little bit of a wall run which is unique, and then you add a little grappling hook that you get later in the game. The movement makes navigating these expansive and open levels very fun and fast. Again, nothing really out of the ordinary, but I will say that the polish on the controls are great and the camera is good for the most part considering this is an indie game. Where I had time really stands out is its willingness to take risks and try new things. For example, one of the worlds is called the Subcon Forest, which is a spooky forest with ghosts and spooks and... Ugh. One of the levels involves sneaking through a haunted house. As you make your way through, a legitimately terrifying ghost will pursue you and you must hide in time before she catches you. This segment was a visceral horror experience that Resident Evil 7 would even be jealous of. Another example is a world called Dead Bird Studio. The world is a movie studio where two directors are competing for an award. You must help each director with two missions each and your scores will give the edge to one director or the other. It's a neat little meta game within the game that makes you feel your actions control the world. Each director has a mission that also really stands out. One is a murder mystery where your cardboard cutout 
aunt kills an owl. A group of crows, who call themselves owls to avoid suspicion, ask you personal questions only to use that info against you in multiple ways. It's a level that focuses on the dialogue and the writing with a bit of stealth mixed in. It's a level that shows off how the devs didn't take themselves too seriously and just had a blast making the game, which I truly appreciate. The other mission is a giant block party where you lead a marching band of owls around to entertain the penguin masses. The kicker is you can't stop moving or the band will catch up to you and hit you, which is very much like the mobile game Snake. I've never seen a mission like this in any game, and it's impressive how fun and well-made both missions are. A Hat in Time ensures each world is completely new and different. A Hat in Time also gives you time rifts to complete for time pieces, which are very sunshine-like with the non-flood missions. Some are platforming-based, while others are collection-based. In short, a Hat in Time prides itself on variety and innovation combined with mechanics that are proven to work. It elicits the pure joy and fun that Banjo-Kazooie gave me back in the day. A Hat in Time also eliminates the stigma that collecting can be tedious by making collectibles plentiful and constantly adding something new to each world. The game contains secrets and incentives for the completionist while still being quick enough to finish in about 10 hours or so. There is a whole cast of interesting characters who fit the world perfectly. Even Hat Girl adds variety by being able to change her hat looks and her outfits through a free lottery machine. This is also partly why that these games aren't around as much. The landscape of gaming is now games as a service. These games are mostly multiplayer oriented and involve doing the same things while skewing the result and some of the actions in between. Take for example something like Overwatch or League of Legends. They monetize your experience with things like loot boxes and cosmetic items or adding maps with each season. 3D platformers are really the antithesis of these games. Oh, excuse me. They are a single player, semi linear, one time experience, and with really no ability to monetize it. That's why Mario is king in this format. Mario is sort of like the Markiplier's or Game Grumps of the world. The format that they're on is mostly one that's dead in its medium, but they single handedly carry the load because they're just that good. A Hat in Time was really a breath of fresh air in gaming. Many games need long, drawn out cuts scenes and tons of backstory before the game starts. This isn't necessarily a bad thing, but sometimes it's nice to just play a video game instead of having to have a movie-like experience. A Hat in Time should go down as one of the best platformers of all time, and I highly recommend it to anyone who needs a 3D platforming kick. Thanks for watching my Hat in Time video. <laughs> If you liked it, please give this video a like. I worked really, really, really hard on it, so I'd really appreciate it if you did. Also, if you want to talk about something that I said, or you want to suggest maybe another 3D platformer for me to play, uh, comment in the comments below. And please give this video a share to your friends and your family. It would really help me out. It would help the channel out. And if you like what you see, which includes game reviews and skits, podcasts, streams, uh, please give the channel a subscription and hit the bell and all that nonsense. I'm not getting into it. Uh, we also have other game reviews for you guys to check out. I did one on getting over it. That'll be right here. And Chester uh, did one right here on Bloodstained. So check those out and we'll see you guys another time.